Uh, my name is Samantha Blumenfeld and I study printmaking at the Rhode Island School of Design and I'm currently taking a break from studies at Columbia University. I, um, I do a lot of virtual work and I have a long experience with curating, including um, exhibitions for the wrong New Art Biennale and also uh, for alternative art exhibitions in Seoul. Uh, my name is Albert Che. I'm an illustrator and I also work with um, screen printing and uh, in, in our studio, uh, we develop uh, like different methods and like different equipment, uh, so we can both uh, like both pursue uh, screen printing. And so our studio is called Mini Print Soul, and we wanted to structure it like an American style community print studio, which meant that other artists have access. We do workshops, we do community outreach, because especially printmaking in general, is a community art form. And so we wanted to be able to build that kind of community here. The beauty of screen printing is it's just a series of technical steps. With other forms of printmaking that are sort of like in the institution of printmaking, it's a lot less accessible for any kind of person to enter. But with screen printing, once you learn the steps, you can build a home setup, you can build a bedroom setup, something in your bathroom. Um, you can make a t-shirt brand, you can print on any kind of surface. And so I like that the bar for entry isn't necessarily that high to get started. And I, it feels really democratic because anyone can learn. They don't have to be an artist, they don't have to be a designer. They can just find an interesting image and then want to disseminate it. Or they could be involved with a political protest. And I think the openness, that flexibility has really not been fully realized or fully embraced by you know people who engage with it or see it or, or are aware of it. So at Graphite on Pink, we're gonna have an exhibition in uh, November. November. It starts November 3rd, and we're gonna be showing our uh, screen printed works. And then the exhibition is called Serigraph. So Serigraph is the fine art printmaking name for screen printing, which is, as most people know, a mostly industrial process. And when it comes to the overlap between screen printing and art, there is a kind of overlap between illustration, between bookmaking, industrial production, and also artists who don't work in silkscreen, but then are making silkscreen editions alongside other studios. And so I, I feel, and I think Albert agrees with me, that it's a very underrepresented medium, that there's not really exclusively screen printing artists exhibiting their work, really since the likes of maybe Andy Warhol. And so we saw this exhibition as an opportunity because our work is exclusively in silkscreen to really like show what the medium can do. So uh, my predominant medium is silkscreen, but I do a lot of new media. And what I'm really interested in conceptually is the image and how we perceive the image, how we can access the image and how the image is disseminated or how it can be spread. Because every time we see anything on a kind of surface or anything we can perceive visually that becomes an image. And an image has its own reality with its own rules. And I'm really interested how that relates to printed mediums when we see advertisements or magazines or even book covers, or how it has to do with video, like video games, watching the news, a movie, even videos on the internet. And so I've really focused predominantly on how the image is made through manual and digital means and like how those kind of processes can be in dialogue with one another and how they kind of talk about their own medium itself. And so um, I'll be exhibiting uh, for the first time. It will be an installation with three different screen prints and the idea is that you're viewing um, a kind of like low polygonal landscape like thinking about maybe 90s era like digital design on a computer Windows desktop, like a Windows OS. And so the prints themselves are the individual windows that you're viewing different copies of the same image, but then it reaches not only into your physical reality as an installation, but through the use of augmented reality, because now it's grounding you in a physical space, but it's bringing you back to the digital. And so there's kind of this constant relationship, this kind of constant oscillation between these different realities. Um, I'm going to be showcasing my illustrations. And um, I, I really like the idea of printmaking. Um, I have always been inspired by uh, illustrations on books or advertisements and then I like the idea of there being multiple copies and uh, reaching the, the masses. Um, 
I like uh, so that in, that idea inspired me to uh, make my artwork as screen prints and and my uh, general theme uh, is about occultism and mysticism and I I think people have like um, I think people have a weird uh, fascination with um, something like like something occultic um, and mysticism and then a lot of stories actually come from those those kind of uh, um, kind of like unknown um, and sometimes fear and even if you uh, read a lot of old stories um, they deal with the concept of fear um, it, I think it's one of the uh, stronger emotions that people show so um all of my printed work on paper is printed on hanji, which is obviously a traditional Korean paper. And what I'm so interested about with hanji is traditional printmaking is done with cotton-based paper, cotton rag paper coming from Europe or North America. Um, and that was mostly the paper I had access to when I was learning. And there was very much a lack of Asian papers being sold because of the issues with importing and exporting. And so after coming to Korea and realizing how it reacts to the ink. Like cotton-based papers are very similar to hot and cold press papers, they're really similar to watercolor papers, but you cannot avoid how the paper warps and how it changes the texture once ink is on it. And I really wanted a flat surface, and with Hanji, there's no warping. It can take so much ink, it can take so much water, and it's still perfectly flat. But then the way it flows off the wall is like fabric, it's like a textile. And so I like that kind of contradictory nature of it, that it's so strong, it's so powerful, it's archival, it's a great paper, but then it's so fragile and delicate. And obviously we're in Korea, and probably one of, like, the number one artist who I'm inspired by is Pek Nam Jun, who's obviously a Korean new media artist, is kind of the father of new media, and I think it's really important, as I'm kind of contextualizing myself within Korean new media, that it's really important to have a relationship culturally with Korea. And what I like about augmented reality is by nature it is connected to the internet. You have to be online to experience it, but it becomes a physical part of your world. So now, you know, through this lens that you're viewing AR, it changes your relationship to your physical environment, even though it's really not tangibly there. It's kind of like a sort of facsimile of something tangible. And I like how that alters your daily experience. And I like when artists are using that to alter people's daily experience. So I first started using the internet probably without any kind of parental supervision way too early. Like I was eight years old going on like AOL chat rooms with like full grown adults. Um, there was a, a 3D chat website that I would use um, called Cybertown and we would, you know, you have an avatar, you're in a virtual space, they have like water parks and all different kinds of environments and you're hanging out with people online. And this was kind of like, you know, like really early on, like in the sort of wild west of the internet days. And it was something actually like um, an Italio teacher said to me, like, your generation has the internet. And I thought like, well, you know, like every generation after us also has the internet. And, you know, a generation before us also has the internet. But it had such a profound impact on the way I use the internet. Like what I'm looking at on the internet and what I'm really interested on the internet, aside from, you know, sort of feelings of nostalgia from that period and sort of aesthetics that can express that is really what people are doing on the internet, like watching people on the internet and like reading what people are doing on the internet and especially with the idea of like meme culture and then how an image gets appropriated infinitely. And I'm so interested in how those images become memes, how they become viral, how they spread, how they disseminate and how they create a sort of universal visual like lexicon of meaning. I mean, uh, most of my work is black and white. Sometimes it's challenging to get black paper on like black cotton paper paper for printmaking and uh, so this time I'm going to print the background and then print white on top. Um, some of my other works are printed on um, just regular white cotton paper. I'm, I'm inspired by uh, mostly illustrations in books and sometimes uh, I, I just like looking at illustrations more so than reading books. Uh, I'm yeah, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> but um, also, like I, I like propaganda posters. 
and a lot of them are they use uh, screen printing uh, for like mass production and um, yeah so like those I draw my ins inspiration from those uh, because I, I am inspired by um, like illustrations on books uh, especially old books um, I, I want the viewers to see my work and like and create their own stories I guess for me, I guess if they're in my generation, I would hope they would feel the same sense of nostalgia and longing for like the certain period on the internet or this certain sort of period of when digital vi visuals or virtual visuals were kind of really becoming a part of you know our daily lives. Um, but aside from that, I guess I just want to have uh, interaction, which is why I think AR was a really interesting path to take. I want to. Um... I want to introduce screen printing, um, and I want people to come and see like uh, like screen printed artwork and what they're like. Also, like as for me, when people see my artwork, I want them to be able to kind of imagine uh, stories and uh, kind of I want my images to tell stories.